OKCoin's new OK funds, Julian Assange leaks his own Bitcoin advice on Reddit, and an unconventional family vacation. Hello, I'm Rebecca Ahn, and here's what's happening today in Money and Tech. Following Apple's update to their App Store review guidelines, a new Coinbase app has reappeared on the iOS Store. However, the app was not actually released by Coinbase, but rather by Airbnb developer and Bitcoin enthusiast Andrew Vilchak, who built the app on the Coinbase API. Coinbase has not rejected the app, however, instead responding positively, saying they've reviewed the code and believe it to be secure. It still remains unclear if Coinbase is planning to release their own official version of their iOS wallet app themselves. And Bitcoin payments processor BitPay tweeted today that the new BitPay iOS app, which also recently appeared on the Apple App Store, is not an official app from the company, serving as a reminder for users to be wary of apps that may be making unsupported claims and may not actually be sanctioned or trustworthy. Major Chinese Bitcoin exchange OKCoin announced today their release of new peer-to-peer -peer margin trading features, including both fiat and Bitcoin borrowing and lending, and two new interest-yielding investment funds, dubbed the OK Standard Fund and the OK VIP Fund. In their announcement, OKCoin explains that users can earn interest on their idle funds by lending to other users in the market, also at an interest rate and duration of their choice. The system will automatically match the most suitable loans with those looking to borrow. And Second Market has announced that they are not only planning to participate in the U.S. Marshall's upcoming Bitcoin auction, but are also making it easier for others to as well. The New York-based Bitcoin exchange will be allowing more qualified customers to enter the auction process by submitting their orders in an aggregated bid. Those participating in Second Market Syndicate will be charged a 5% facilitation fee and have a minimum bid of $50,000, which is much lower than the U.S. Marshall's required minimum bid of $200,000. What's more, Second Market will be donating 10% of all auction fees they receive to the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The deadline to enter orders for the auction will be Thursday, June 26th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Russia's Financial Action Task Force appears to be working on a forthcoming paper that will clarify the country's stance on Bitcoin and other digital currencies, aggregating extensive research from anti-money laundering and terrorist financing officials at the FATF and other agencies in Russia, the U.S. and U.K. Russia has been previously very cautious about digital currencies, with past government statements even seeming to ban their use. The coming paper will likewise cover potential risks, but may present a more positive overall outlook, according to project manager Eugene Volovic, who himself said, Just as email today has replaced the usual post offices, and Telegraph came to replace SMS and popular services such as Skype or Weber, radical changes could begin with virtual currency. And in Switzerland, government financial regulators have approved the launch of a network of new Bitcoin ATMs across the country from Bitcoin ATM operator SBEX, which has been accepted as a member of regulated nonprofit organization ARIF and subsequently granted a money transmitter license. Now having fulfilled all the regulatory requirements to operate an ATM network, SBEX plans to set up a web brokerage and install nine ATMs from Canadian manufacturer BitAccess by the end of the year. In an AMA on Reddit today, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange shared a conversation he had with former Google CEO Eric Schmidt in 2011 about Bitcoin. In their conversation, Assange stated that Bitcoin is very important, actually. It has a few problems, but its innovations exceed its problems. Assange then went on to tell Schmidt, you should be an early adopter because your Bitcoins are going to be worth a lot of money one day. Schmidt did not seem sold, however, which Assange particularly joked about in his AMA today, saying fortunately he didn't listen or else he'd own the planet by now. Sovereign Living hosts John Bush and Catherine Bleich are taking their two kids and hitting the road for four weeks, spending only Bitcoin while they travel across the country in their minivan. The plan is to find Bitcoin-friendly restaurants and hotels wherever possible, and then purchase gift Bitcoin gift cards for everything else they need. The family is headed up to D.C. to attend the Bitcoin in the Beltway conference, which kicks off today, and then continue on through New York, New Hampshire, Missouri, and then back home to Texas. You can follow their journey at uncoinventional.com. 
We'll also have coverage on this weekend's Bitcoin in the Beltway conference for you next week as well. In the meantime, find more information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. You can also share your thoughts on today's news in the comments section below. I'm Rebecca Ahn, and thanks for watching Money and Tech's daily news updates.